All right, so today we're going to be talking about my tier list for September 2020. It's been maybe about five or six weeks since my last tier video where I placed all of the existing characters originally, and I'll leave a link to that in the video, to that video, sorry, in the description below. Uh, this video will be focusing on making adjustments to the list from last time and adding in the new characters from patch 4.3. So that's Baron Zemo, Swarm, Electro, and Doc Ock, even though he's not quite out just yet. Uh, this alongside my top 10 overall uh, list got slightly delayed since I was away this past week or so, but finally getting around to getting this done as we get more than halfway through the patch cycle with just Doc Ock left to be released. Uh, this list is also important going into that top 10 character video which will be released later on as we need to see who's going to be either in the A or S tier to qualify for that list. So without further ado, uh, let's jump on over and take a look at who's getting moved for this month. Alright, so I did move myself over here from the left hand side of the screen to the right hand side of the screen just so we're not, uh, I'm not in the way of anyone and you can sort of take a look at the various categories here as well. And I just want to give a shout out to Tier Maker for allowing me to make this list here. I'm pretty awful at infographics and things like that so my apologies that I'm having to do it here. Uh, this list will also be made available via link in the description below where you guys can check it out if you don't get a full view of it here in this video. Uh, before we get started on some of the changes in this list, which is largely the list from last month, I want to point out a few things about my categories. Generally, anything that is B or above is worth investing resources in, and you won't go wrong by doing so with any of these characters here. Now, anyone in the C or below are characters that, while are good, are largely kind of only good in their team, and the investment will be potentially limited to game modes like Blitz, Alliance War, and rather than other game modes like uh, Raids and Dark Dimension and things like that. Uh, and then we also, I also want to say that uh, while I might still be a bit conservative with the S tier, uh, but these are the absolute best of the best characters that I believe you can't have a roster without and are kind of required for one reason or another or for various game modes. But anyways, let's get to the adjustments. Also, I do want to point out, I did kind of change D and E, uh, D, E, I don't even know. E was a previously a minions category, which is now changed to E, don't invest. And I think D is still the same, which is sort of not good. I wouldn't really recommend building these characters unless you really need to or for events. For example, the, the hand characters are in here for hand catalyst and there's cream minions and things like that. But otherwise, you don't really need to level them unless it's particular for like a flash event or something like that. And E is definitely kind of worse than the worst. Uh, to note, here in Baku and Akwe are in E. They are for chaos theory, but in terms of actually building them up, I really wouldn't recommend using them. Um, you know, try and use the other three Wakandans and build them up a bit more, and therefore you can still get away with, you know, having them up in the star tier. Uh, if you must, you know, just put a little bit of gear in it so they survive, but otherwise I wouldn't recommend putting too much resources into them. So. Uh, that covers actually the beginning of what I wanted to talk about. So M'Baku and Akwe were originally in the D category. I, I moved them down to the E category here. Um, again, only invest in them uh, for Chaos Theory as required. Now we're going to be moving Minerva here from the A to the S. And that's because of comments that were made uh, in my previous video. And I do believe that she is... A must-have. I think she is she is amazing for Dark Dimension 2 and Dark Dimension 3. Really good in raids, especially if you're a newer mid-game player. And if you're around here for July when they had the I'm pretty sure it was July that had the login calendar for Minerva, uh, then you should be definitely ha you should have her and gear her up for that. She's definitely a great raid character and someone that you should really have in your roster. Uh, now moving down uh, my notes here, <laughs> we do have Mystique is getting moved. She's being moved from C to B. Uh, I think now that we have, uh, we're, we're using Marauders a little bit more with Emma Frost, and I think she's better than Sabretooth in my opinion, because Sabretooth for me, you know, you could build like a, a Marauders or Moltron with Ultron in it, and Sabretooth in my opinion is definitely getting the boot if out of anyone, and I think Mystique is actually pretty solid. Now we're going to be moving a Graviton from A to B as well, he's getting a bit of a downgrade this month. Uh, he's still a solid character, but probably doesn't deserve to share the A category with so many other better characters here. But, you know, he's still a must-have if you are using AIM and building them up. Now, Storm is also getting a move from B to C. Uh, there was a bit of an issue with Storm last month, actually, that I didn't properly place her. Or, uh, when I was building the list originally, there was a bit some issues there. So, uh, Storm is getting a downgrade from B to C with Wolverine here. And... Uh, now that Cyclops is farmable as well, I think he's a better sub in for that team than Storm is. 
And next on the list is Nobu. So I think he actually already got moved. He was originally in the trash tier. He is a pretty trashy character, uh, but he is getting a slight upgrade to D. And the only reason for that is because of his use in the Phoenix event and Relic Hunt. But otherwise, an incredibly trashy character. And until there's a hand rework, I definitely don't recommend gearing him up uh, unless you need to for the Phoenix event. But of course, we do have... Uh, other characters available. Hela is available for Phoenix now as well. So if you can get a hand on her and you can actually get to farming her, then definitely do that over someone like Nobu or Hand Assassin if possible. Now next on the list changes is Rescue. So where is she? She is getting moved from C to D. Did I already do that? I already did. Okay, so I moved her from C to D. Uh, really only usable in power armor and very little good outside of that in my opinion. Uh, now Falcon is getting a move as well. He's getting moved from B to C, so I'm doing that now here, and we're moving him down there. So uh, the reason for that is uh, he's just not being used as frequently as I used to use him. Uh, he used to be really good with the so-called Tech Wing for Ultima 17, but this isn't really used anymore in favor of stronger characters and symbiotes for raids and things like that. So he is getting a downgrade for that reason. Now, we are actually moving Invisible Woman up from an A to an S tier. Uh, she is used in Arena more in that hybrid Black Order counter. And just in general, I think she deserves to be up there as well. We, we are going to be filling out the S's a little bit more. Uh, but I know I'm still going to get flack probably because at the end of the day, you know, <laughs> these are people, my opinions. And, you know, not everyone's going to agree with my opinions. But, you know. It is what it is, unfortunately. So I didn't want to fill this up too much. I think these these characters really deserve to be up here. And I will go over them one by one at the end as well. So Shuri is also getting a move up to the A to the S tier for the same reason I believe that Invisible Woman deserves to be up there. Kind of along the same lines, just not for Arena. She's an amazing support character for raids uh, in Dark Dimension 2 and, and for Global, Dark Dimension 3 Global as well. And a solid healer with low cooldown. So I think she's a really good character. And for newer mid-game players, I definitely recommend building up Sinister Six so that you can unlock uh, both uh, Invisible Woman and Shuri as well. Two solid legendary characters that you can get for the price of one. Now, Call of Sitting is getting a move down from an S to an A tier character. Uh, I got a bit of a bit of flack for putting him into the S category, uh, so he is moving into A. Uh, but he is an amazing standalone character, even without his full team. You know, he can two turn taunt, uh, which many tanks can't uh, without other characters like Colossus, who requires Phoenix for two turn taunt. Uh, and he does a surprising amount of damage. Uh, his damage output is pretty good for a tank, so uh, he is still going to be in the A tier with the rest of the Black Order. Well, actually, the, the, no, sorry, my mistake. Uh, uh, next on the list, Corvus is being moved down from an A to the B, and we'll stick him somewhere up in here. And uh, so the reason for that is he's still a really great character and what makes Thanos empowered, but his standalone value is not as good as Proxima. So I believe that Proxima is a little bit better than Corvus uh, with Star Throw for the offense down and some of the control ability that she has. Uh, a lot of people do consider using Proxima for Cosmic Lane for Dark Dimension 3 because she's a skilled character, uh, but definitely has more versatility than uh, Corvus does in my opinion. So, uh, next on the list is Ultron. Now, he's being moved up from A tier to S tier. Uh, might get a little bit of flack for this too, but uh, I got flack for, you know, other choices as well. So, uh, I got flack for having him in A. Uh, I personally don't use Ultron as much as I used to, but I acknowledge how good he still is more broadly as a character. I just wish he had some red stars. I think, I don't know if that would make him too OP with the with the minions, with the, the the Ultron bots, but I think that he's slowly falling off. Still a really uh, versatile character in a lot of game modes, so he is going to be up here in the S tier for that. Uh, now next on the list, uh, Aim Researcher. Uh, this is another move that I'm making. Did I already make that move? I, I'm, I'm moving her up from D to C now with the rest of the A minions. Now, uh, she is good for Villains Chapter 7, even though I personally don't use her. Uh, but, you know, I got some flack for having A Monstrosity up here. So we're just going to throw A, Mon uh, a Researcher up alongside with the rest of the A minions as well. Now, of course, the one that does, doesn't make the cut up here is A Infector, is in my E category of Don't Invest. So A Infector is the worst character in the Aim bunch. So please don't level him either. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have some of the new characters for this patch. So this is all of the adjustments I'm making currently uh, out of the list. These were characters that stood out to me uh, in terms of, uh, you know, changes that I believe they made or they kind of dropped or, you know, had an increase. 
leave a comment in the in the section below you know if you guys think I missed something or if you believe that any of my characters that I have here should be in a different category I'm always open to criticism and comments about who should be in a different uh, tier ranking now I think where people most care about is the B A and S I don't think people are gonna fight me too much over the C and the T too much uh, but definitely any characters up here I suspect that I might get uh, some arguments with every now and then or some criticism for that so Anyways, we're going to be placing the, the new characters of this patch here, so I haven't placed them yet. And so Baron Zemo is going to go to the A tier, in my opinion. So we're going to move him up here into A. And I think he is a great character. He has an amazing kit. He's solid in war offense, but a lot of fun in PvP balanced. Uh, if a PvP tier list does become a thing, you know, uh, if they start doing it way more, I will create a PvP tier list, and he definitely will top that. Uh, usable in Greek raids as well, uh, in places where you can use Hydra or skilled characters too. You know, he's a lot of fun to use, and I've been using him a lot in, in balanced PvP, and he's just an absolute monster there. Oh, sorry, just had to take a drink there. And so who we have next on the list down here is we do have Doc Ock. So Doc Ock is also going to be going into the A tier here. Uh, he is a war-focused legendary. He has a pretty awesome kit, but I don't know if he's going to be as earth-shattering as Black Bolt, Phoenix, or Ebony Maw were. Now, this might change. You know, this could be subject to change next month, but my current feelings put him here for now. And, of course, we don't really have a, any chance to actually use him. So, again, this might change, but I think this seems appropriate for now. And I think this is where I'm going to leave him. He, you know, he is a legendary, a newer legendary, but I don't think he's quite on the same level as some of these S characters. And so now we have both Swarm and Electro. And, um, you know, they're both going to head to the C tier, I think. Uh, both really need Doc Ock to elevate their usefulness uh, up to greater heights, and being reliant on others kind of put them in that C category, unfortunately. Uh, they have cool, neat kits, but overall, I think that their usage outside of Sinister Six without Doc Ock is really limited. And Electro, particularly, is kind of limited to war for the most part. So uh, that's where Swarm and Electro are going to land for this month. Uh, this might change. Everything might be subject to change for next month, but this is where I'm currently sitting at for now. Now, to go just a little bit over the S tier category. Sorry, the S tier characters and why they're there. Uh, Phoenix is an amazing character. You know, if you have Phoenix, then you don't need me to explain why. And if you don't have Phoenix, then you should work on getting her. Um, she is definitely a must-have for Dark Dimension 3, especially for the first eight nodes. She's really important. And a lot of people, if you don't have access to the full Black Order, a lot of people still use her to fight in arena mode. And she's really important to have there. Now, Hela is still here in the S category. She is a very solid character, both for raids, for Dark Dimension... Uh, for arena depending on where your shards at and for war especially so she is an all-arounder character she has a really great kit with Greg with her passive the turn bar knockback with Greg uh, she spreads debuffs she does a lot of things and she is amazing uh, Black Bolt uh, again amazing legendary blaster one of the only legendary blasters his damage output is crazy people use him all the time in raids in Ultima 7 and he is a solid solid character still being used in arena as well if you're not using Black or Order and war he crushes things and dark dimension um, not as frequently uh, but he is still usable in dark dimension 3 cosmic if you need an extra character for that he is bio though so keep that in mind when you're building up other characters like symbiote spider-man Ebony Maw, one of our newest legendaries aside from Doc Ock, who's not out yet, and he's the one who makes uh, Thanos empowered, and that's the whole reason why Thanos is an A, uh, and not S, because of the requirement of having Ebony Maw, amazing support character. Um, if there was a difference in my category, uh, Ebony Maw would be like an S, and, you know, Shuri and, and Invisible Woman, in my opinion, would be more like an A+. Uh, I, I feel that Ebony Maw actually does what both of them can do. In, in one kit, uh, so the special with Ebony Maw is very similar to, you know, the offense down, which is what Invisible Woman can do, and defense up for two turns with Shuri, so it's kind of a combination of kits, and she and he gets barrier when you kill hero controllers, amazing character. Uh, Symbiote Spider-Man revolutionized the game when it comes to raids in Dark Dimension, so being able to use him alongside Carnage and Venom, who also made the A, I think... I don't know if Venom was always in the A. That might have been a recent change. I don't know if I acknowledge that change, actually, now that I'm on the topic. And I think Venom might have been in B. I don't remember from last list, uh, but he is in the A now. So Symbiote Spider-Man alongside Carnage and Venom really make for a great raid team. And for Dark Dimension 2 and Dark Dimension 3, they're super, super solid. 
And uh, we are expected to get more symbiotes in the next patch, apparently, uh, in the form of Anti-Venom and Scream. So, uh, look forward to that and completing that symbiote team, and I <laughs> I can only imagine what kind of greater heights uh, and shenanigans that these characters are going to have together. And I already talked about Minerva, Invisible Woman, Shuri, and Ultron, so I'm not going to go over them again, but that's my list here uh, for the S-tier category. Um... I know some people are wondering about some of these A tier categories, uh, Emma Frost particularly, uh, I, I do leave her in the A tier, if you did watch my Emma Frost video, there's, there's I list all the reasons why I don't believe, personally for me, she's an S tier category character, but she is a very great investment character anyways, and so that's why anyone that's in the, especially in the A or the S, they are definitely characters that you should consider investing in for one reason or another, and so I'm not saying Emma Frost is bad by any means, she's a great character, uh, I just don't believe she's on the same level as some of these here personally but uh, feel free to uh you know comment <laughs> down below if you disagree with that everyone else in the a category i believe they deserve to be here i think they're very strong solid characters and some of the b you know it, it, this might come down to opinion personally i think that uh they are all very strong characters for one reason or another i'm not going to go over them all individually uh but they are you know very strong characters either with their team or standalone value as well and so yeah that's my b category here and of course definitely i'll be leaving my uh, list will be available in the description below so you can take a look at it as well if you're just curious on your own time and you don't want to scroll back through the video to be able to check it out later so uh, this is my tier list for september 2020 uh, this will be uh, a bit more regular uh, unlike uh, the gap between this one and the last one and i think i'm probably going to be doing this probably in the middle of each patch session or closer to the end of it so that uh, when i do release my top 10 characters of all time for the patch uh, that's going to be towards the end of the patch cycle as well whereas my top 10 free to play uh, video normally comes around the beginning of the patch cycle just so I can sort of even things out a little bit so uh, that's all here for the tier list and let's jump over to the outro and so that's my updated tier list for September 2020 patch 4.3 now I don't know if there was as much movement this patch as I maybe expected it to I know that I may get some additional flack for not talking about the Wave 1 Avengers, uh, but personally, while the adjustments to them were nice, I don't think it still warrants moving them into B or higher. Uh, but they're still fun to play around with if you happen to have landed uh, some good red stars on them. Uh, but anyways, I am looking forward to see how Doc Ock plays out and whether or not my estimation on him is accurate or not. And of course, looking into the future towards patch 4.4 and the new characters for that should be fun and exciting, so stay tuned for more discussion around that as well. Uh, that's all from me for today though, uh, so if you enjoyed my video then please smash that like button down below and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. And of course, until next time guys, stay safe and I'll see y'all later. Boylan signing out.